Okay, so today I'm going to talk about a book called A Mind That Found Itself. It's by Clifford Gears. I decided to do my historical analysis on this because I was interested in learning more about mental health and it's something I've considered doing after graduation. So to start, I have a statistic that states 42.5 million adults in the U.S. suffer from a mental illness today. So those of you who have a card with an X on it, if you could please stand up now. So out of 20-ish people in this classroom, this can represent on a smaller scale how many U.S. adults actually suffer with a mental illness in today's age. So thank you guys, you can sit down. That means that 18.2% of adults suffer from this, and with that large amount of individuals, it is important to understand what we're talking about and how our abilities to work with mental illness has changed and developed over time. So today, I'm going to talk about a few different things in regards to my topic. I'm going to talk about the important terminology, what led up to the book, the different experiences that Beers had, the results from the book, and how society has been impacted by the publication. So to start with terminology, there's two that are important to understand, and that would be mental hygiene and mental health. And mental hygiene isn't just an older term for mental health, so those terms can actually be used interchangeably. Mental hygiene, the mental hygiene movement happened in the 1900s, and it was to raise awareness around the issue of mental wellness. Sometimes today, mental hygiene can be used to place an emphasis on methods and activities that are designed to prevent mental illness. And then we have mental health, which describes both preventive measures as well as actual treatment for mental illness. So to get us started in the right direction, a quote from Beers that sums up what we're talking about today says, most sane people think no insane person can reason logically, but this is not so. So to start understanding how mental asylums are ran, we first need to understand who was admitted into these asylums. The photograph on the screen has different reasons why individuals were admitted into the asylums. So both men and women were admitted into asylums, and they could either be admitted by themselves, by family members, or sometimes by the law. The individuals could be defined as mentally insane due to different reasons. Um, some of these could be that a woman is not following her household duties. Some could be because they are lazy, they have assumed hallucinations, um, they were partaking in witchcraft, they were dealing with an emotional shock, physical illness, epilepsy, or even as just being defined as feeble-minded. Some of these reasons are still accurate today, but some of them, including being lazy or not following social, norm, social norms, are not reasons why we would admit them into mental asylums. And then from this picture, when I was doing my research, there was a few that really caught my eye, enough that I wanted to point out to you guys. And those would be that some patients were admitted because their parents were cousins, because they were defined as being bad company, they had jealousy, or they were kicked in the head by the horse. And that's literally on there. So, along with that, um, there's other reasons that we need to look at this, and that would be that there's um, so many other factors that were working against the patients. A large issue was the patient mistreatment, and the patients suffered from beatings, unneeded mental procedures, dehumanizing treatments, and more. The nurses of the asylums had minimal training, resulting in low levels of appropriate knowledge and mental health on mental health and mental illness. They were not properly, properly equipped to deal with what was going on, and so that caused a lot of harm in the asylums. So now that we understand what the asylum life was described as, we can move forward into the main event that my historical analysis was written on. Clifford Beers was the author of A Mind That Found Itself, this book was an autobiography that Beers wrote based on his personal experiences in a mental asylum. Beers describes his book as a human document because of its uncommon nature. In the publication of this book, we are able to learn specific ways that individuals extreme, had extreme maltreatment from nurses and doctors. We also learned that Beers attempted suicide uh, because of his deep depression and hypermanic excitement in his 20s. Society also had a wake-up call. Um, they realized that this was unacceptable treatment, and they realized that something needed to be changed. So, I have a clip for you. This girl does a really good job of explaining on a shorter basis of what was going on, and this she found from his book. ...committed him to the mental health institution of Stanford Hall. Later, he would then be moved to the Hartford Retreat and then to the Connecticut State Hospital in Middletown. He 
was then shortly released, but suffered an unfortunate relapse in 1904, where he then spent a few months back at the Hartford Retreat. All three locations were hostilely prejudiced towards mental health conditions, most likely due to a lack of knowledge and general stigma surrounding mental health conditions. In Beer's book, he depicts accounts of being beaten by patients because he was unwilling to speak to them, being shackled to his bed, and being chained and kicked by institution staff. After he began to think consciously and realize the devilish conditions of the treatment surrounding him, Beers began to act out violently against the staff, causing him to be placed in the most controlling and violent location in the institution. While here, he was routinely beaten and choked by dangerously undertrained staff, as well as being placed in a straitjacket for 21 nights in a row. His fellow patients were institutionalized for anything from stress and paranoia to novel reading and laziness. This blatantly unjust treatment was suffered by everyone in the population of these institutions, clearly not working to help, but to worsen their mental states. Clifford Beers left the Hartford Retreat in January of 1905, where he then worked diligently to write his autobiography, A Mind That Found Itself. The book was published in 1908, in which Beers describes his condition and its details, the inhumane treatment he suffered in institutions, and his journey in healing himself. So from his experiences and the publication of this book, Beers sparked the mental hygiene movement, as it exposed the mistreatment of patients, what they encountered in the mental asylums, and it started an appeal for change. Beers also had support from some rich and famous. Two that were included was William James and Adolf Meyer. In addition, the new mental hygiene movement inaugurated a worldwide movement to encourage a plan for improvement on education on the public of what was going on. Another quote that I found it to be very impacting and important, Beers said, to leave behind what was in reality a hell and immediately have a good green earth revealed in more glory than most men ever see it, was one of the most compensating privileges which made me feel that my suffering was worthwhile. So moving forward, the publication of A Mind That Found Itself had a few different impacts on society. It impacted the education field, psychology field, medical field, and understanding mental health. Because of this, society had gained a strong understanding of the importance of training and being able to provide a proper aid for individuals on a personal basis. The book acted as a social reformer, as it exposed the mistreatment, and changed how patients are treated in asylums today. On a broader subject, it changed the understanding of mental illness and the importance of ethical treatment plans. Those are just some references in case you guys want to learn more. And do you have any questions for me? So why was Beers committed, or did he like commit himself? He was committed by a family member. His brother was going through, I don't remember what he was going through, but he was going through some sort of issue. And counteracting that, Beers had, had struggled with that. And so then he was admitted, and he did need to be admitted. He was having, in their times, he needed to be admitted, and he was struggling. But then he realized what was going on there wasn't helpful at all. Um, how do you think things would be different if he hadn't been admitted or like had these experiences? If he had never been admitted, I would assume that the maltreatment would have gone on for many, many more years, and I would even question like how we would have eventually figured out what was going on. And then I just think he had a really big impact on how ethic ethical codes started, so I wonder like where we would be if he wouldn't have been admitted and realized like, this isn't okay. Yeah. Um, so, did, when it, this book first came out, did people question, since he had been in a mental institute, if this was like in his head, or you know, if he was mentally competent to talk about it? I don't think they really questioned him, because he went around and went, he went to the president, he went to, um, I believe this Theodore Roosevelt was the president, um, he went around to a lot of rich and famous and immediately got their support before he really made it a big deal. So he had so many higher ups support behind them that people immediately saw like this is not okay and I think it took time to fix the problem but I think he went in the right direction of asking for support. Unfortunately that's all the time for questions we have right now.